Okay, dead leg. One of the big storylines from the bracket reveal was that the Big East only got three bids. You okay with it? I actually understand. I disagree with it, but I understand it. It's not crazy. Well, going into this, and this is another one of our questions right now. If you're if you're listening, the uh, the poll question for tonight's episode is what's what's your biggest gripe? And the four options that are in there are MSU and MSU, Michigan State, and FAU seeding situation. The three biggest teams not getting in. Iowa State being a two seed, uh, and where or the Mountain West seeding. Again, we'll uh, we'll update those results in a little bit here. And Saturday at the biggest tournament, I'm like looking at all these resumes, and it was. I mean, you can you can do a taffy pull on Seton Hall versus Providence versus St. John's versus Seton Hall versus Providence. And I did think that one was going to squeak in. I thought it would be the Johnnies. I was wrong. How about, dude, how about the fact that St. John's and Providence weren't even in the first four out? That's they so weren't bad. even close. Now, I didn't think, I have to go back. I had the prediction early. I didn't think Providence would be in the first four out. St. John's is one a lot of people missed on overall. So what we have here is UConn is a one, Marquette is a two, Creighton on the three line. That's it. And that marks only the second time since uh, the tournament expanded that the Big East only has three teams in the field. Uh, and that was in 93, I believe, was the other time that happened there. And Seton Hall fans got to be, they got to really be, you know, have their ass chapped at this because they were they were pretty close. They were a 13-win team in the second best conference in the country at Ken Palm, and they still didn't break in. They had the wins over St. John's. Like, I, I can get why that they were prioritized there, um, but it is kind of wild that you have this disparity where the number two team, again, for Ken Palm, gets only three into the field, and this predictably had, you know, some cascading effects. St. John's will not now not play in the NIT. Uh, I actually haven't – I've been uh, – dude, Night's been insane. I don't. Is Providence? Are they going? Do they all? Be, did they all boycott the NIT? Or is I it just believe. I believe Providence is playing in the NIT. Okay. Um, I think I saw Seton Hall is as well. Check and can uh, lift us up there. Um, but yeah, last four in: Boise State, Colorado, Colorado State, Virginia. T ball got it. The committee's got to be familiarized with the T ball metric because Virginia making this field, man. Are you kidding me? I had them out. I did too. I didn't think they should deserve to be in. Now, Oklahoma didn't surprise me. First of all, Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indiana State, which true or not, and I, I I believe when the committee puts this out, this is actually how the votes tallied. I I was highly confident that Indiana State would be right near that cut line because a mid-major, Missouri Valley, Drake getting a 10, by the way, kind of indicates that. And then Pitt, how about Pitt jumping the line? Bad non-con SOS, but uh, jumping the line on Providence, St. John's, well, almost my wake, I guess, was in there a little bit. Um, yeah, man, that's, that was that was tough. And uh, so that means conference total overall, and then it's all UGP. Big Big Twelve's got eight. SEC is eight. Big Ten is six. Mountain West has six. ACC with five. Pac twelve with four. Big East three. American A ten WCC with two apiece. Your highest teams in the net not to get in. Record setters this season. Again, we're all six years into the net. Indiana State at twenty nine. St. John's at thirty two. You know, Michigan State, Virginia are teams with questionable resumes that made the field. I think most people had Michigan State in, but not as easily as they got in. I think a lot of people had Virginia out. They get in. The So you start looking at them and wonder, well, what did the committee see other than big brands and, you know, excellent national championship winning coaches? Because Michigan State is – Nine and fourteen in the first two quadrants, five games under four under five hundred in the first two quadrants, and Virginia is ten and thirteen, or no, rather ten and ten in the first two quadrants. So um, Michigan State's got more quadrant one wins. Virginia's got inferior computer uh, numbers, but Virginia is five hundred in the first two quadrants, where Michigan State is five games below 500 in the first two quadrants. The thing that they have in common, they're very clean in quadrant three and quadrant four. Um, Michigan State is 10-0 and in quadrant three, quadrant four. Virginia is 13-0 and in quadrant three, quadrant four. It seems like maybe the best thing going for Michigan State and Virginia was that they did not – they took a lot of losses, but they didn't take quad three losses and quad four losses, and that seemed to, to save them on Selection Sunday. 
I mean, uh, Michigan State, I think, scheduled the way that it thought it needed to schedule to ensure itself to have some safety with all of this. I get that. I, I'm not cool with a 14-loss team getting to the nines. I, I, I think I think it's a joke, frankly. Uh, I, I don't think they have any business near the uh, near the nine line. Here are our poll results right now. What do you have the biggest issue with? Winning right now is the Mountain West at 31%. How the Mountain West got seeded and treated. It's close second, 29%. is three biggest teams, only three in the field. Third place is where MSU and FAU fell. And then last place is Iowa State being a two seed. That is interesting overall. Um, since we're talking bubble stuff with all this, yeah, the Mountain West getting two to Dayton is stunning because Boise State popping up on the screen. And I did see the video. Did you see the video from um, from the watch party when they were they had the, like, you know, they had, you know, someone there watching, waiting for them to pop on the screen. And it was a it was like they were watching a horror film. Man. Yeah. It was like auto, like massive gasps when they realized that like they barely got in and they had to go play at Dayton. Uh I just don't get it now. I can't remember if I've mentioned this on the pod or not, but there's been some good research by some some folks in the past couple of years, and it got more attention as of late. The BPI has this weird altitude elevation bias that that is against the Mountain West program. So if you go and check like the Mountain West teams and where their BPI is relative to everyone else in the field and all the other team metrics, it's drastically lower. I think it's a real problem. Like they got six teams into the field. They would have only had five if New Mexico didn't win the auto bid. I've been raising hell about that on this pod. That's for damn sure if that uh, had, that had been the case. And you just across the board, you've got teams that are like San Diego State I'm good with. Boise State should be nowhere near Dayton. I mean, that, that's an utter joke. Colorado State I would argue is the same. You can maybe sell me a little bit more on that. Um, Nevada, a 10. Uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 was, I was surprised on that. And the chat actually has the biggest issue with that uh, overall. So your thoughts on? Mountain West teams in the going in and Big East bubble. Anything. Take it Shocked that New Mexico needed to win Saturday night to get in. Um, I had them in safely. Um, Utah State is an eight. That's out, what. Yeah. Come is, on, man. Out. Are you kidding me? That's the one. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Purdue might have to play Utah State in the second round. Yeah. What? I mean, and that's, you know, that's an outright conference champion of a league that got six bids. And they've got great Osibor who is like, you know, a talented big. Like, like, like that, an eight seed is outrageous for Utah State. And I know that the predictive metrics never loved them as much as I loved them. But yeah. there is no way, no way you could put Utah State's resume up there without connecting it to a name, just like blind resume. You can, And I said, I'll give you $1,000. You can find 32. Uh, uh, what do they get? A, what do they get? An eight seed. So what does that mean? You got to find what? 28 better than this. You can't find 28 better than Utah State's. You just can't. I, can. I I know you know. I look at this stuff every morning. You cannot find 28 <laughs> bodies of work better than Utah State's. It's outrageous. We had Danny, Danny Sprinkle on our show tonight, CBS Sports Network. He was great. And, uh, you know, he was like, yeah, we're a little surprised where we are, but we're just happy to have a seat at the table. And I was like, I know you're happy to have a seat at the table, but I think you got the wrong chair. Like they put you in the wrong chair. And I said, is that something you will address with your team as like motivation? He said, he said, I'm still, he said, I'm still talking about us being picked ninth in the Mountain West preseason ball. <laughs> so, so of course, of course I'll use it. And he did. And I think this is important. Let's just say Houston goes out and loses in the round of 32 and Kansas gets upset by Sanford and Texas Tech goes out early. Oh boy. Okay. Listen, here's what I'm saying. Nobody is going to then write a column saying is the big 12 over i mean somebody might oh, oh 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 yeah. i think that might be coming oh yeah i mean i probably, do think that's oh, coming. Yeah. okay it'd probably be a virginia fan <laughs> uh, well i just i think i think that is in the wind if it, okay if it comes okay to that. Maybe, yeah. maybe i talk myself into a, a down a bad path there you'll get the point i'm trying to make there are things that can happen to leagues in this tournament where it isn't considered an indictment of the entire league but if the mountain west teams don't perform in this tournament it will be – it'll be – yes. oh, God. Uh, oh, that was cute how yes. they just beat up on each other every Tuesday night at 1 a.m. on CBS Sports Network and all of y'all like, you know. Yes. You're leading to my point. Yeah. I want, of, we just didn't have the time and the space and the, and the real estate on HQ at any point tonight to get into this. But let's bring it up right now. Yeah. Because the, the, the – I understand. You got to win the games. The deck is stacked against the Mountain That's West. That's right. Yes, it is unquestionably them. stacked against. Uh, and it's a six bid league. Is and it was. The thing is, it's not just that it's a six bid league. 
The teams are legitimately very, very good, and they play entertaining basketball. I, my 1-68 to went up on Sunday night, as it always does, and I try my best to basically power rank the field. A, a combination of how good I think they are, their talent, their coaching, but I do I do give recency bias to, like, how have you been trending them the past month or so? Here's where I have the Mountain West teams. I've got San Diego State the, the highest at, at 16, okay? And I think that's reasonable uh, overall. From there... You go down, and I've got – then there's a cluster. Utah State, I've got at 25. I've got New Mexico as high as 30. Colorado State, 31. Uh, I've got Nevada, 35. Boise State, 36. Uh, am I missing one more? I think I am still scrolling here. Maybe – or is that is that it? I might be missing one. Uh, but uh, my point is this. To me, pretty much every team that got in is top 35, 36 level overall. Um, Nevada's – yeah, Nevada's in there as well. So um, – I just think it's tough draws. I mean, Utah State as an eight to having to play Purdue. You got two teams that got to now get out of Dayton. San Diego State, I have zero issue with. I actually thought SDSU got itself a nice little uh, landing spot there. And then New Mexico's got to play Clemson and they might have to play Baylor. Um, I don't want to hear anything about the Mountain West being overrated if the, if the conference doesn't perform well. If, the, if we don't have a team win a game, sure. If we have one total win for the conference, all right, we can have the discussion. But I don't think that'll be the case. But if we look up and there's only one team that's into the Sweet 16 – um, I think the seating situation around it will have as much to do with that as anything else. It's just the Mountain West is a league version of Gonzaga or old Memphis and CUSA where people are just waiting to say that you were overrated or not as good as, as whoever thought you were throughout the season. So, you know, when, uh, when, when North Duke or North Carolina or you know, Indiana or it's these big brands get upset in the tournament. It's just like a little story and we move on. But when Gonzaga gets upset in the tournament, it's an indictment on the entire two months prior that they've spent in the West Coast Conference. Um, and, and so the Mountain West will have to deal with that backlash if it comes. And Danny, I, I asked him about this. He said, absolutely. Like, that's a real thing. As a league, we have to perform or else it'll be used against us. Um you could argue that it was used against them on Selection Sunday. The idea that they're just not really what it is the, um, you know, the, the, the human polls and you know what what this entire season has told us. But if they don't perform in this tournament, then it'll it, it'll it'll be a storyline. So you know, I wish them luck. FAU, I just want to sp spend because we're talking bubble teams, and I know they weren't on the bubble, but I don't know why they weren't. <laughs> I mean, they got an eight seed. Norlander, like, I just let me walk you through this real quick and then explain. Let's do it. Yeah. And keep in mind, I used to be an owl. I used to be an owl. Now I'm a bowler maker. That's right. I'm now a bowler maker, but I used to be an owl. At one point in my I, life. I believe season. you had this team top five preseason. So, who, so, like, that's important to point out. I ain't your FAU hater. I was the biggest FAU believer. And I still, like, you know, I still got them in the round of 32 at least. Let's see what happens. But, they're two and two in quadrant one, eight and three in quadrant two. So 10 and five in the first two quadrants. That's great. But they if you oh, stop there, all you right, I'm there, on board. They're great. That's like that's like eight seed stuff. I'm with you. But then you got to keep going. They only have two quadrant one wins. They have three losses outside of the first two quadrants. They have a quadrant three loss to Temple just the other day. They have <laughs> quadrant four losses, two of them. One to Florida Gulf Coast, one to Bryant. A number eight seed we've already established with multiplication tables that that's a what, top 32 in the country. Top 32 in the country. That's what an eight seed represents. FAU isn't in the top 32 of any computer you can find. Not one. You can't find one. You can't find one. They don't. So what? So what are we doing? They don't have great wins. They have lots of bad losses and they don't have strong computer numbers. How do you get an eight from that? How do you, you ready for this? I mean this sincerely and I love Dusty May. All right. I want this part to be in the podcast. I love Dusty May. I look forward to his introductory press conference, wherever it is. All right. <laughs> I, I can't wait for that. All right. It won't be Ohio State, by the way, out of nowhere. That's it, a different show, though. It won't, be, it won't be Ohio State. But I look forward to his introductory press conference, wherever it is. Florida Atlantic should have been closer to out than an yes. eight. And it's not even debatable. This is where the committee, like Wally Zerbiak, who, who, is my friend. I love him to pieces. Um, he he like he he like constantly is like, oh, you little Ken Palm nerds. Like he doesn't. He he I like know. he's very much a basketball. He's a basketball yeah. player, right? I get, I get and it. I actually appreciate it because he'll like for I sure. Like, I like that he doesn't get into the numbers and he just wants to watch it and and yes. analyze. I like I like that. 
But anyway, tonight, even Wally was like, why don't they have people like you and Rothstein on this committee? And I don't want to be on the committee. Like they, he wasn't being, but what Never he, row. but what he meant, what he meant was my God, even to me, this seems crazy. Some of these seatings and they don't see, and, and they don't seem to know what they're talking. Cause we get that. We get a chance to talk to these people and we ask, go back and watch the interviews. We ask them all these questions. They never answer nothing. They never answer anything. I have never, if you ask them one question about, a number one seed or on the bubble or seating, they will never give a coherent, convincing answer. Never. They just talk and they cherry pick things. And if you ever had a, like, I wish we would stop doing, because the way we do these committee chair interviews, it's like four people. And it's like, all right, you ask one question, then 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 we'll do it again. And then we're out. I would rather see that with just one-on-one -on -one follow ups. Like, hey, okay. Hey, I just asked you how FA you got an eight, an eight seed. Cause I did. I did. And you just spoke for 45 seconds and you said nothing. You didn't answer it at all. So, hey, can we revisit that? Tell me again what you saw in FAU. It ain't the big wins. It ain't the lack of bad losses because they got a ton of those. It ain't the big wins because they don't have many of those. It ain't the computer numbers because they ain't top 32 in any computer that most people look at. So what what are you looking at that, that gave you an eight seed there? Like I, we don't get to follow up like that, but but they they, yeah, they don't give they don't give suitable answers because they can't because because uh, yeah. in some there's, cases there's, they're just they're just they're just they don't know. I, there's I don't no def there's no defending it. Um, uh, who would have, would have ever thought that we have reached the point where it it would you just can't help but look at a bracket and say, wow, MSU and FAU getting legacy seating based off of reputation. <laughs> what are we doing here? There's a lot of people in the chat that are commenting that they think it's the worst seating job they've ever seen. I'm not going to go that far, but. What my big takeaway on this is we had bid thieves across the board. And I do love bid thieves because I it, it adds stakes to building up the selection, something that I love. But unfortunately, this committee was not equipped enough to handle the cut line raising to a level that I, I can't recall every damn year. But I just don't think there have been more than two or three years since I've really been following this and like following it for like, 22 23 years pretty intensely i think this was almost one of the most competitive bubbles i've ever seen i knew it would lead to some wildly off predictions because that was going to be inevitable but the way it happened like still blew my mind it still blew my mind and the committee needs to diversify i have said this or written this for a long time it has only ever been comprised of conference commissioners and athletic directors and i understand why it's the ncaa tournament it's run by the ncaa you need to have two, three, four different kinds of voices on that committee that who are intelligent, play the game, associated with the game. It can be you can put freaking Ken Pomeroy on the committee. And Ken Pom, by the way, has been on the record multiple times saying, no, no, don't use my system to, to, to seed your tournament. You should be doing resume based inclusion. But, you know, use that to give you an indication of where teams are and if it comes to, you know, or, or selection more than seeding. But. The committee was out of its depth here in a way that I frankly didn't think was going to happen. Um, and I would expect, and this is from talking to a few folks with the NCAA, I would expect like moving forward, we might get a, a few tweaks here and there with the process. If not next year, pretty soon, uh, they should really have a, a review on this. Uh, I know there's plenty of uh, Patino killed the net. I get all that. And that's not a power ranking. I understand. And I, I, I agree. Like there should be some tweaks. The net's been shrouded. It's a black box. The quads, they have cutoffs and all that stuff. Use strength the record more. Use wins above bubble. I think there will be a real dialogue about introducing that stuff in the years to come.